Pittsburgh's restaurant scene just keeps getting better and better. Maybe you have your own favorite places to visit or are always looking to try somewhere new. Pittsburgh Magazine's June issue is your guide to the best restaurants in town. Here to tell us who made the list and how they were selected is Pittsburgh Magazine's associate editor and dining critic, Hal B. Klein. Good morning. Good morning. I love this. I love flipping through. I love seeing familiar names and places that I wanted to try. So how do you narrow down the list? So basically, this is a months long process. We have a committee of about 20 people um, that some people have been on it for 25 years. Some people have been on it for a year or two. I'm on it. Uh, our editor's on it. And we debate. We spend months, you know, talking about where we've eaten, what we like, what we want to see. We debate. Sometimes it gets very tense. Sometimes it's really fun. <laughs> and, you know, at the end of the day in February. So basically, the restaurant has to have opened uh, before December 31st of 2017. Okay. And in February, we narrow it down. We make a list. And then I spend the next couple months, you know, really digging in and writing and trying to, you know, think of something new to say for a restaurant that's been on for a long time and something exciting to say for something that's new. Okay. So does it come down to like, well, they didn't have enough salt on their fries? Or, I mean, does, does it come down to the nitty gritty sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. You know, it really, it, and it, it changes every year because I think we keep changing the idea of what a restaurant is, right? So it used to be that it was, you know, a best restaurant had to be fine dining, white tablecloth. And then in the last couple of years, it's, you know, well, there's a place like Gaucho in the strip that, you know, yeah, you might have to wait in line and you might have to order at the counter, but like, how do they manage the line? Is it fun to wait in line? Is the food, right. and, you know, and then the, the final criteria, which is always for me the most important criteria, is it delicious, right? Are you going to have a great meal? That's the bottom line. Right? And if you were, as a reader, are going to go to the list, and you go to a restaurant, are you going to want to come back and go to another one because you're excited about what you just went to? I see. Okay, and so you separated the list. Is this something new that you did? So last year was the first time I did that, okay. and this year I honed in on it even more because, again, you know, as we change the definition, or broaden the definition of what best is, then it's, you know, if you want a fancy night out, there's a category called fancy night out. If you want, if you're on a budget, we have the best restaurants that you're going to go to on a budget. And then at the top, there's a category called all arounders, which you know really looks at a complete restaurant experience that you can go to for a lot of different reasons. And then Pittsburgh has a few of these classic places that you know that part of the reason we love them, you know, Tesaro's we love because it's a classic, and right. it's you know you're going to get that feel and that vibe there. And I love this too. Um, you can in the article. Um, you can find a lot of great pictures, but even like you under Fancy Night Out, you have something on floor two, and you have this nice little breakout about them. Yeah, we have uh, two categories that we break out, or three. We have a chef of the year as well, but delicious design, floor two, best new restaurant, superior motors. Um, so we give each of them a little bit of a mm -hmm. blurb as well. All right, so let's talk about Bar Marco. Where did this fit into your list? Bar Marco is an all-arounder. Bar Marco is one of my favorite restaurants in Pittsburgh. I was actually just there the other night. And, you know, what I love about Bar Marco, too, is it's a restaurant that a couple years ago was going through some changes and didn't make the list one year and just came back, you know, even stronger and now is is like really like just like settled in and matured into like exactly what it's supposed to be. And I mean, I, I adore Bar Marco. So much so that they're on the cover. So much so that they're on the cover, yeah, exactly. Up next, Bitter Ends. Bitter Ends Luncheonette is one of the new restaurants this year um, that, again, it's a, so this is a, a great example of a restaurant that maybe a few years ago wouldn't have made the list because it's a small, it's 17 seats, it's one person, you know, doing a lot of the cooking and a couple people farming, and it's, you know, exactly, like, it's where I like to see restaurants going, and I just think they're doing everything, like, really, really beautiful. And there. they're located in Bloomfield. In Bloomfield, right? yeah. Um, Cafe 33, where is this one? So Cafe 33 is in Squirrel Hill. It's Taiwanese, so what we're starting to see now are these regional Chinese restaurants um, instead of this catch-all, you know, Kung Pao chicken. It's regional Chinese food. These are, it's a Taiwanese couple that run the place, and it's just... Again, it's the service is amazing. The one of the owners, Jenny, is out in front, and she makes people feel really comfortable. You can watch her tasting bubble tea to make sure it's perfect. <laughs> and then her chef, her husband's the chef, and it's you know a lot of really amazing food that maybe you haven't had a chance to experience before. Yeah, how do some of these places get on your radar? I you know I'm like constantly just like looking at stuff on like social media. I'm right. going out. I walk around neighborhoods. Um, you know, I was walking around Squirrel Hill the other night, and I saw a sign for a new restaurant that I'm going to go to tomorrow. Can you tell us? And then. Me? I, it's a northwestern or northeastern Chinese <laughs> yes, restaurant. Right. Okay. I don't know anything about it. It might be good, it might not be. <laughs> um, okay, so you also have Cafe Carnegie, and where does this fit on your list? Yeah, so that is um, at the Carnegie Museum. Um, so Sonia Finn, who runs Dinette, which is another restaurant on the list, um, a couple years ago came in as the consulting chef. Uh, the museums were like, why don't we have a restaurant that is worthy of the museums? They're these amazing museums. And I love it because it's a daytime space. So I think most of these restaurants are, you think about dinner. Right. And this is a place you can go 
to for a really beautiful lunch, you know, with a great salad. And again, the service is great. It's a warm atmosphere. And everything is done with just like really nice little details. Uh, Salem's is also on your list. Yeah. Um, and so I love this place. It's um, again, and this was a one that like had a lot of discussion on the panel. And there are some panel members that weren't as much, you know, thrilled about it as I was because it's kind of a cafeteria. It's a buffet. It's a hotline, but it's the most inclusive restaurant space in Pittsburgh. Um, it's halal food, um, and it's just it's absolutely delicious. And I know we've talked about this restaurant before too, Dianoya's. Yeah. So Dianoya's Eatery. Um, you know, sometimes restaurants don't quite make a cutoff in the year before, and Dianoya's as we felt like when we made the list for 2017 wasn't quite there and then it's just become all day breakfast lunch dinner um, it's Italian food it's the food is like it's great you get these uh, porchetta just like sliced and served on house beef focaccia um, and then pasta and then their cocktail list is amazing they have a really great bar program there that the drinks kind of match yeah. the time of day we actually passed it on our way back from the parade yesterday, and my husband says, I heard that place is good, so I'll need yeah, your recommendations great. for what to order when we finally go there. We also want to make this announcement because Chef of the Year is in this issue. Yeah, Jamilka Borges. Um, so when we selected her, she was the chef at Spoon. Uh, she's since moved to uh, the independent brewing company in Hidden Harbor, and they're about to open a new space in East Liberty called Lorelei. Um, and Spoon is still great. Brian Pekarsik is back there. He's the original executive chef and the owner. Right. And Jamilka, we loved um, both her cuisine, but also her like immense dedication to like volunteerism. So she raised money in these dinners for four and two food rescue. For um, her mom has a charity in Puerto Rico. She's Puerto Rican uh, to raise money for like the hurricane victims. Um, she's working with a bunch of other organizations. It's you know. She's just a, a, an extraordinary person and an extraordinary chef, and we thought that she'd be a great choice this year. Definitely worth picking up the magazine just to read the article on her for sure. And congratulations to you on your two Golden Quill oh, Awards. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining <laughs> us this morning. Yeah, it's a great issue. Me. And all the best restaurants in the new June issue of Pittsburgh Magazine, maybe one of your favorites is in there, or you'll find some new places to check out. You can also try them at the Best Restaurants Party. It's coming up on June 11th at Heinz Field. You can look for more details at kdka.com slash PTL.